Good afternoon and thank you for joining NSBA and our partner uh, GoSite for a great webinar we have planned for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the changes in the digital landscape, how to set your business up for success. Uh, we know that in the last six months it's, it's been kind of a rough go and there have been a lot of challenges you all have faced, uh, particularly when it comes to technology. So um, I, we're really excited to have GoSite here uh, sharing their expertise with us. Uh, my name is Molly Day. I am the VP of Public Affairs here at NSBA, and I'll be handling the back-end moderation and uh, chat and Q&A, all that like good stuff for the webinar today. Um, I'm happy to turn it over to um, my friend Eric Dodds, who is the Director of Business Development at GoSite, and he's going to be the moderator for the rest of this uh, webinar. So take it away, Eric. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for having us. Um, we should have a really fun time today, and it should be very insightful. We've got a bunch of fun stuff to share. Um, appreciate you all tuning in. Um, for today's agenda, just a quick story on GoSight. Um, we're a software company based out of San Diego, really passionate about helping small businesses. Um, all the way from our, our, the top, our CEO grew up in a business of small business owners, and we've essentially created a platform that makes it really easy for traditional offline businesses. So think everything from professional services, home services, main street businesses, to consolidate all the tools that they need to, to take their business online and really effectively grow their business um, across the numerous digital channels. So um, on, on today's call, we're really gonna hone in on, to Molly's point, um, kind of there's, there's gonna be four key kind of topics that we talk about all around you know, COVID and the, the, the new normal we're all living in. Um, so you should be able to walk away with um, some strategies, some ideas of things you can implement in your own business um, to, to really succeed moving forward. Um, a lot of things we're going to talk about, um, GoSite does help with. So if you, if you're looking for, um, kind of some easy solutions at the end of this due to y'all being, um, members of the NSBA, we do have, um, a special offer for you and everyone will receive a recording of this webinar and an actual e-guide, um, kind of walk you through a lot of things we talked through. So, um, without further ado, let's kick things off. Uh, we got a live poll to get things started. Um, just wanna get a lay of the land. Um, we know within the NSBA, we're, we touch in a number of different industries. Um, so just a quick poll, what industry are you guys in? Um, so we can hopefully uh, can, um, use some, some content that's very specific to some of your industries. And I did want to mention, um, for those of you who dialed in um, from the web browser instead of downloading the app, you may have some, some issues with the polls. I know we've had some issues in the past. So um, if you're unable to access that poll, uh, just hang tight. We, we know that that's kind of an issue and it's, it's one of those weird things that happens going through the web browser. So um, something I'm sure the uh, experts on the line can explain a lot better than I could. But um, with that, Eric, it looks like the uh, polling has slowed down a bit. So I'll go ahead and um, close the polling and then we can share those results for, with everybody. Love it. We got a, a nice wide variety here. So awesome. Um, all right, perfect. Well, um, without further ado, we have a star studded cast today. Um, so I'd like to, to formally introduce both Justin and, and Sean. Um, so thank you guys um, for, for joining us and being part of the conversation. Quick intro, we'll start with Justin. Um, Justin is first off second generation um, CEO. He took over his family's business um, when he was 25 and he's, since then he's grown it from 1 million to 10 million um, in, the, in the past five years. Um, received the 2020 business year, business of the year award by his local business chamber. And he's really focused on technology and innovation um, to you know, really outpace the competition and provide their clients with an, an unmatched experience. Um, he's also uh, a very green guy. He's, he set a very ambitious goal to reinvent how we manage water in our landscapes. Um, the goal he set is to save 1 billion gallons of water by 2025. So Justin, welcome. Thank you so much, Eric. It's great to be here with you guys. I'm excited to share some of my experiences uh, over the last six months. COVID has been a challenge and uh, looking forward today, which is always an exciting topic for us to discuss. Awesome. Glad to have you. And then we'll jump to Sean. Um, Sean is the COO and co-founder of the River Beats Digital Group down there in New Orleans. So they're dealing with uh, lots, lots of fun uh, hurricanes and uh, as we all are across the country, there's all these 
all these natural disasters going on across of everything else. But he's got a really cool story. He's uh, um, basically built a following of 170,000 followers um, and readership of well over 2 million across multiple digital publications. Um, out of that knowledge and expertise, he's actually developed a full service digital marketing agency with a focus on small business. Um, so he's done everything from manage huge marketing projects um, for or projects for, for small businesses, live entertainment, hospitality, e-commerce, as, as long as well as working with some national brands such as Live Nation, AG, Lyft, um, Soundbooks, and more. So we're really excited to have Sean on as well. So Sean, welcome. Thanks, Eric. Uh, great to be here. Really excited to just talk about, you know, like Justin said, the last six months and all things related to small business and the new world that we're living in. Right on. Um, Perfect. Well, I think we want to start it off with a, a quick question um, for you both, um, kind of telling a little bit more of your story. Um, Justin, we'll, we'll go to you first. Um, basically, just walk everyone through how, how was your business impacted by COVID-19? And then um, were there any specific digital changes you made for your business? And kind of how are, how are you looking forward right now? Well, thanks, Eric. And, you know, the question definitely it's loaded because I can talk for an hour or, or maybe a full 24 hours about how COVID is impacted. Our business, I would just say from a, a revenue standpoint, you know, the landscaping industry we're in is in different sectors. We have commercial uh, maintenance where we're, we're managing and, and uh, maintaining large commercial landscapes for business parks. We've seen a little bit of a hit there because a lot of us, as you can see, we're, most of us are uh, video in, in from home. So the business parks uh, don't have as many people in the business. So the landscape doesn't get the same attention as it used to. So that's kind of pulled back for us, but we've actually seen a big boom in the residential sector where residential clients, again, they're spending more time at home and they want their backyards and their living outdoor living environments enhanced. So we've shifted resources of, you know, people, men, equipment to residential installation and, and really to feed that additional need. And then, you know, we've also had to adapt the way we communicate uh, everything from the way we, the sales process in which we estimate a project, the way we bid a project. Uh, we can't always go out and meet with people on site due to COVID. And we know this has been kind of a, a roller coaster of a ride of, you know, what's okay, what's not okay. There was a time where we physically could not go onto a job site. So we had to use, you know, video conferencing and FaceTime to do our estimating. Um, and then all the way through the life cycle of the project to the final bill, you know, everything's gone digital. So your payment process, how you invoice a client, we're doing a lot of text to pay, you know, email to pay. So we're getting away from the old, you know, checkbook and invoice and going much more digital on the payment process. And something that actually has been a, um, a, a positive consequence of that is we've been getting paid much quicker because people are able to pay uh, in an easier format than writing a check and putting it in the mail. So there's been some positive things coming out of this. I think overall the, the mindset for us is let's shift, let's adapt, let's innovate quickly, uh, let's meet the needs of our clients, and let's move digital as much as possible, uh, which I think is definitely here to stay. Thank you. Yeah, and no, I, I, I hear you on that, and um, it's, it's the honeydew list, right? Everyone's at home, they, they all got these projects, so that's definitely probably contributed to that boom, so uh, appreciate you sharing there. Uh, Sean, same question to you. Yeah, um, just to give you some back side on our company. Um, our digital group was founded out of New Orleans, but we operate several publications across the country. Um, and typically over the past three to four years, our revenue was coming in from um, live events and working with tourism, hospitality industry, um, and kind of of that field. And as uh, everyone in the country has seen, once COVID kind of hit dramatically uh those industries were pretty hit hard and we went we went pretty much to zero revenue in approximately five days um so for us the you know the writing was on the wall we kind of saw it we were forced to switch or pivot our business model which i think all small businesses are having to do even large-scale businesses across the country um, and we were already working, you know, for some small businesses in this area as a marketing agency, but it wasn't really where our focus was. Um, and over the time of the lockdowns, I think that we saw the opening, which was we needed to help these smaller businesses 
not only in our region, but across different various regions that we had our publications, um, get online, uh, move from kind of the old school way of thinking into the new school way of thinking. Um, you know, and, and during that time period, there was, like you said, that list of what people could get done. Same thing here. I went from managing projects every day to basically having nothing for about three months. So I, you know, I, we were luckily able to build out a new business model um, and a new way that we attract businesses and help them out. Um, and over the past, I would say since the end of the summer until now, it's been successful and, and we have officially launched our agency and, and it's kind of where we are headed now. Um, and I think that kind of reflects well on what most people in this um, webinar are probably thinking the same thing. So that's kind of how it's impacted our business and the changes that we've made since that. 100%. I appreciate you sharing that. It's, it, it's always a powerful story of, you know, we basically went back to square one, right? We lost all of our revenue in, in five days and now it's rebuilt on a new model of looking forward. Um, and, you know, you hear everything from, you know, people, distilleries, right, like pivoting to making hand sanitizer. And there's so many good stories out there of people adapting. And so um, definitely on today's call, we're going to share some, some more of those um, kind of ideas and, and positive stories from what's worked and what's not worked. So um, if we can jump to the next slide here. Um, essentially, there's going to be four key pillars of what we talk about today. Um, the, it's going to be adjusting your, your, your mindset, like basically, you know, rethinking the, the customer journey, you know, what has changed, you know, and, and how to, how to adapt your mindset. Number two is going to be choosing the right technology. There's a million technologies out there right now. It's not a matter of, Hey, let's go buy everything out there. Let's be really strategic about let's buy the tools that will allow us to communicate better and make sure that everything talks to each other. Um, having systems that talk to each other is essential. Um, the third pillar is me building your digital foundation. Basically, how, how do you go to market? How do people find you? How do people interact with you across the digital landscape? And best practices to, to do that in the most streamlined manner. And the fourth is going to use the data. Work smarter, not harder. Once you're tapped into all of these digital um, channels, it's, it's how are you collecting that information? How are you using it to constantly be improving your business? So. Um, to, to start things off, the, the first pillar, adjusting your mindset, right? The, the new normal. Um, and I, I think there's a, there's a lot of businesses out there that, you know, a lot of people have been in business for a while and they've been able to kind of slowly, you know, it's slow and steady wins the race. We all know the story of the tortoise and the hare, but in times like, in times like now with COVID, everything has been accelerated. Um, so it's the, the businesses that will succeed the most are the ones that move quick um, and essentially, um, you know, it's, it's evolving to meet the, the customer needs and expectations. Um, so this is, we, we, you've probably already seen it. You probably use some of these tools. You think about, um, like zoom, you know, zoom or ring central, everyone's online. These, these tools are here to stay. Um, business SMS was something Justin, uh, mentioned where there's all of these different tools that allow you to easily communicate. Um, and so it's just kind of rethinking that rethinking what your customers are, are looking for. Um, and if we jump to the, the next slide here, essentially it's, you know, the, the most successful businesses will place digital at the forefront of their business, really be leaders in that um, kind of thinking outside the box, thinking, you know, ahead a year, five years, everything we're doing right now, um, it's not going anywhere. Um, and so obviously, you know, Deloitte right here says, um, you know, the, the companies that are going to succeed moving forward are not the ones who weather the storm and trying to get back to the old, like established business models. It's going to be the ones who are innovating, trying new things, not afraid to fail because they know that long term, those are the things that are going to work. Um, and so here, I, I want to tee you up here, Justin. I know you had mentioned rethinking the sales process, right? Um, and can you kind of talk through that? And I think it, it'll be a good segue into kind of our, our next topic as well. Kind of just talk through the specifics of that and, and maybe some of the feedback that you've actually received from your customers on some of these new things that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely, Eric. So <clears throat> as you know, Deloitte it kind of you know shows us here, you have to adapt quickly. And, and this is forced all of us to rethink the way we do business. And the first way that we have to look at things is how do we interact with our clients uh, from the very beginning. Clients are finding us in different ways. People are online more now than ever uh, because again, they're at home. They're not 
bumping into their neighbors at the cocktail party anymore uh, to get a referral for you know a real estate agent or a contractor they're now going online to seek those business services so it's really important that we have a really strong online presence that's not only there but it's also relatable and that's where we go to social media and google my business and you know just really you know for, for us we just try to be personable and be authentic don't try to put this you know lavish show on just be yourself online and so from that point we we connect with the customer uh, online and then once it's time to bid the job for us we're in landscape construction and you know we go out and meet with them it's it's all about <clears throat> you know digitizing this whole process so it's note taking and it's it's communicating with them through email and text and adjusting the way the sales process works to fit the client's needs. We have some clients who are, you know, young millennials in their twenties who want a text message and, you know, um, actually communicate through like Pinterest or Instagram or something else. Then we have other folks who, you know, would rather pick up the phone and talk to us. So it's having the broad way, range of options to communicate with your clients and kind of adjusting the sales process to bet, best fit the specific client. So we've, we've really, you know, I think it's going to be more and more digital as we go on into the next, you know, 2021 and beyond. Uh, one of the ways that we've really digitized the process is, you know, emailing the proposal over with a detailed list of what we're, we're providing them in the cost estimate. And we used to, believe it or not, you know, sit down and go over things in person or, you know, hand deliver proposals, but now everything's gone to digital communication. So for us, it's really just adjusting that sales process to meet the client's requests and what works most comfortably for them. So when they're, when they're in their comfort zone and you're communicating with them in the format that they best fit, then I think you're going to have a much better success on, on the entire sales process. 100%. And I think that ties in beautifully to being change oriented, if kind of recognizing that there's, there's no one size that fits all, it's, but you need the, the new forms to communicate to those people who want them that way. Obviously, there's, there's always going to be people who, you know, they, they don't trust technology, they don't want to do it, and that still comes through, but more and more people are being forced online because they're, um, they're not out in the world, to your point. They're not at, you know, the coffee shops talking to their, to their friends. So um, it, it's a nice segue into, uh, and, and Sean, did you want to chime in there at all on kind of the reimagining digital leadership or kind of reimagining customer journey? Yeah, I think, you know, going back to the point one, we said the, the next normal, I think the next normal is obviously here. Um, you know, it's, it's often that rapid change in digital industry happens with either, you know, natural disasters or things like pandemics, or even if you look at like 9-11 in the past, how fast technology can kind of increase. And we've been talking about amongst, you know, our team that we're calling this the great reset in which, not only are our businesses having to reset their models, but customers are resetting their habits, maybe where they shop, where they eat, how they work with clientele, how they pick who they're going to actually use for these services. And you kind of have to reflect that a little bit, um, take advantage of these new habits. And then on your end, you know, now is the time to launch new ideas, new strategies, new business models, new revenue streams, because, in the past, maybe you thought that that would, ref that would hurt your business um, and change, but right now I think customers are more forgiving on changes than they have been in the past because they're willing to understand that you also are going through things like them. So take advantage of that while you still can and um, you know, plan for the next normal, but it's here right now and start to make those adjustments now. So, yep. 100%. And I think we, we saw it and you mentioned um, kind of 9-11, but then also even just back to the, the Great Recession, right? There's so many businesses that came out of these, and these are obviously huge companies now, but you think about the Ubers, Airbnb, Square, like all of these companies who basically looked at the, the shift in public perception and what was going on in the world, and they doubled down on that, and, and it's all backed up by technology, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's it's a, it's a great segue here of, you know, technology, finding the right technology can can push your business so far forward because um, number one it, it's making you quicker right you can communicate with quick people quicker you can get found quicker um, it allows you to build processes right and to ensure consistent quality 
Um, and then, you know, the, the biggest thing is all of this ties together of, of building trust with your consumers, right? Building trust, making sure that they know that they can always communicate with you. They can always reach you. They know how to, because nothing changes. Once you get the right kind of technology in place to open yourself up um, to all these different channels where people are coming in, you, you build that and it can, and it can hum on autopilot and you can constantly iterate it and be improving. Um, and so really the tip here is as um, you know, obviously there's a number of businesses going through the ringer right now, but it's looking at, Hey, what can, where can we free up resources to actually invest in to digital solutions that will allow us to not just survive right now, but thrive right now. Um, and, I, and there's a couple, um, we'll, we'll jump to the next slide here of kind of the, uh, a really key pillar of this, right? Is so many businesses, like traditional offline businesses, their doors are closed. They can't communicate with people the, the way that they want. And so this is where you need to move your storefront online. You know, obviously the majority of businesses now have a website. And I think a lot of, you know, small businesses still think of a website as, oh, it's this huge 10, 15 grand investment. And it's not like that anymore. Technology has advanced so quickly where you can light up a website in a day. Um, and really the website is, it's not just a, a digital brochure, right? That's not what a website is anymore. It's, a tw it's allowing you to be open 24 seven. Um, it's allowing people to communicate with you, text with you off your website, book, book an appointment with you for a consultation, kind of start the conversation, um, even, even paying online, um, having photos, videos, just to your point, the sales process, reimagine that. You can digitize your, your sales process. People want to know who they're working with. If you're not meeting with them in person anymore, how do you make your website a complete reflection of who, you know, what you're passionate about, what your mission is as a business? So, um, absolutely step number one, if you don't have a website, you need a website. If you haven't updated your website in, in, in five to 10 years, there is a hell of a lot more you can do now to, to make it a, you know, an omni-channel communication platform. Um, and moving on from, from the website, right? Once you get the website up, it's not just the website. There's all of these different digital channels and there's still business out there who don't have CRMs or a centralized place to log all their customer information. Um, you know, people still aren't leveraging email marketing. Um, live chat is, is huge. I'm sure you guys have all experienced it, right? Um, you know, it's after hours, you're doing your research, you've been working all day, you, you know, you need to get your carpets cleaned or, you know, what have you. Basically, you need to, if you find this business online, you have a quick question. Having those channels open allow you to communicate with people 24 seven and capture that information, even if you don't get back to them until the next morning. Having that, um, and then the, the digital payments have, have become huge. You can see right here, the term contactless with, with COVID, safety, health, everyone's afraid of cash and check. Um, so getting, getting the right tools in place to accept contactless payments, um, you know, it, it, the powerful story um, here, and, and we can jump to the, to the next slide is, we, you know, I work, with, I work with this guy who used to, he used to drive around and drop off invoices and collect cash. And now he sits at his desk and he sends out text reminders. He's like, I, this is like the coolest thing that's ever happened. You know, he, he's like, I sit here and people pay me and all they have to do is click two links, plug in their credit card and it's in my bank. Um, and that's the, that's the reality of what we're living in is, you know, everyone goes online to buy products, right? It's become a five, tr digital commerce has become a $5 trillion industry. Um, the checks, snail mail, cash, it's, it's dangerous and it's outdated. And so, um, kind of a lot of the challenges people are, are dealing with is, you know, if our customers want this, like, how do we, how do we offer this to them? Right? Like, how do we limit the in-person transactions? How do we limit cash? Um, and it's, it's super straightforward is you get the right technology in place, right? You get the right technology to allow people to, you know, to be able to send out invoices and we jump to the next slide here. Um, there's all sorts of stats on this, um, online. We don't have to go too deep into it. Um, but essentially, um, you know, get the right tools in place, allow people to, um, to, to pay you. Um, everyone loves getting paid, right? Make it quicker, safer, faster for everyone else. Um, and then Justin, I think you mentioned you, you same story as I kind of just told you, you were mentioning you get paid tw twice as quick. And then have you actually heard from your customers as well that, that they like that process better? Yeah, especially on our residential clients, <clears throat> you know, when we offer them these alternative ways to pay uh, from check, 
you know, they, they pay quicker and they, it, it feels more secure to them than writing a check and just sending it off in the mail. So yeah, we're getting paid quicker. And I think just to kind of back up on this, everything you were talking about from the website to your payment portal and your communication process, these are all ways that allow you to charge more money for your product or service. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> being average is the price you pay <laughs> to basically be the low cost provider. And no one wants to be the low cost provider out there. So when you get these things in line and they used to be expensive, like you said, 10, 15,000 for a website. Now you can implement all these tools super easily with products like GoSite and you're able to charge more for your product and increase your profit margins. Because one thing I found is with COVID, it has eaten into our profit margins at a pretty substantial rate. And we've had to adapt and change the way we price our products. So, you know, this all, you know, kind of, I can cap all this off. And I know there's a lot of small business owners out there wondering, well, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to find the extra time? And, you know, we've been able to charge anywhere from eight to 10% more for our landscaping product now that we have a better customer journey and a better customer experience. And we're finding more and more customers wanting to come back to us. So, you know, it, it you can add that, you know, part-time administrative help to get this stuff in line and increase your prices to recover that costs. So, you know, on top of that, you increase your cash flow. It's just a win-win all the way around. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and we got a question here. Um, what is, what is everyone util utilizing? Sorry, let me make sure I'm reading this correctly. What is everyone utilizing to secure company and customer data, especially with remote users accessing internal resources over the public cloud? Um, Sean and Justin, you guys have any thoughts there you want to chime in? Um, just about, you know, data in general, um, I think that utilizing it and capturing it is probably going to be, you know, the tools that you're acquiring it on, you know, obviously if you're using a third party such as GoSite, um, you can capture data that way. I think there's two levels of understanding the data is that, you know, um, the point is to understand what it is saying and then leverage it to better your business. So I guess, let me read that question one more time. Um, that would kind of be my advice in that sense is make sure if you're using a third party that that's secure and that um, it, it's available to you and then just understanding what the data is and how you can leverage it. 100%. I think there's um, pretty much any um, kind of software technology company now, everything is secure in the cloud. There's also kind of like single sign on solutions out there. Um, so, it, you know, I, I know Okta is a, a really good one, but um, essentially any kind of anything that's in the cloud, the majority of people are built on, you know, these huge companies, Amazon web services, it's all secure because it's going through kind of their, their platform first. Um, so it's really kind of in, in the process of evaluating, it's asking those questions to ensure that they're built correctly to secure data and keep you safe. Right. Um, cool. So the third, third pillar here is kind of, you know, we talked about once you once you set up your you know your online storefront you can you connect it to all of your other systems allowing people to communicate with you it's basically building your digital foundation right you have you have that pillar but then how are all these people finding you um there's all these digital channels out there and you know the the number one place where you know we, we probably find it in all of our lives what does every consumer whoa what does every consumer have right a smartphone and this is essentially where consumer search starts. They're, they're not just going to your website anymore. They're doing unbranded category searches, right? So think, you know, consultant near me, accountant near me, dry cleaning near me, right? And there's profiles out there in it. Google Maps is the biggest one, but you've probably all noticed if you're searching on an iPhone, the default GPS application is Apple Maps, right? That's a whole nother profile that's out there that contains your critical business information. Same thing with Yelp, with Facebook, Yahoo, Bing talk about voice search. You can talk to your phone now. You can talk to your car. All of these platforms basically have information that's out, out there. And if you don't have structured data, if your information is not consistent across all of these, remember Google's an algorithm. It's a machine. And so they're, they're crawling the web. They're looking at all of these different business directories online. So you think back to like merchant circles, um, city search, the yellow pages. These are, these have all digitized, right? And 
you know, nobody goes to the yellow page anymore to find any sort of business, right? They're pulling out their smartphone. So Google Maps has essentially become the modern day yellow page. It's the number one place where consumers go to find information about local businesses. And I have a funny story on this. I had to get a couple of shirts dry cleaned for uh, Halloween weekend, right? We're all planning, or I'm planning costumes. I'm not sure about everyone else, but you still gotta keep in the holiday spirit. They said they're open at 7 a.m. I go there this morning and they're closed. And like, I understand being in this world of like, unless you have a system to automatically update all of your information and keep things accurate, it's impossible to do that. But like that alone, like that customer experience of driving somewhere and getting there. And it still says like, even on their window at their door, it says they're, they open at seven and there's just no one there. And like, I understand things come up and you know, I'm not gonna go leave them a negative review, but not every you know, consumer has that understanding, right? And so um, just recognizing that there's all of these platforms out here where consumers find you and information exists. So it's a matter of either you own it and you control it and you can make sure you have perfect answers for, um, for your consumers everywhere, or you risk, you know, them, them finding information that's out there that's incorrect and, and really dinging kind of that customer experience with your brand. Um, and I, th that's kind of, you know, component one is make sure you're found everywhere. But then the second component of this is your online reputation modern day word of mouth. People aren't necessarily, you know, talking to each other in, in the coffee shop anymore. They're not getting uh, word of mouth referrals anymore. And so everything has gone digital. Um, and what's crazy is you'd be surprised just by asking for feedback. Online reviews are important because they help you get chosen when people are searching for what you offer in your area, right? Whether they see your billboard or hear about you through one of the traditional forms, they're still looking you up online. It's, it's, that modern customer journey we talked about earlier. And so basically the way to, to tackle this is simply ask, you know, you can ask your customers in person, you can send them a text, you can send them an email. Like we want your feedback. We appreciate your business. Right. Um, you'd be surprised how many people are willing to do that because we all have happy customers. Right. And it's just a matter of, of asking um, if you do have negative feedback that's out there, it's not the end of the world. That is actionable feedback for you to improve what, what isn't working, right? And it also gives your, your customers a, a channel to communicate with you if you're, if you're getting that feedback. So um, on, on that note, um, Sean, do you want to jump in there and kind of talk about your um, kind of where you see reviews now and I guess where you're seeing it moving forward for, for small businesses? Yeah, I think um, just to build on this, build your digital foundation and kind of connect the technology point together. I think it's a well-rounded approach. Like you talked about, you know, the mobile web and even like a review economy. So all of these things are pretty much needed in order to continue to build your foundation. And, you know, even even active social media and, and sometimes even local PR and help like that. So I think if you're struggling to build a foundation and to have some of this technology, maybe, you know, bringing in a tool like GoSite or hiring someone to help you can help maybe build that foundation even bigger than it was before. And for us, just coming from um, an industry that's a lot of um, hotel, hospitality, management, stuff like that, even personal services, everything is reviews. I mean, uh, pretty much everybody that's in this seminar can probably remember one time in which they chose to go to a place based off the reviews that they had looked up. So I think it's super important to A, be well-rounded while building that foundation and then B, continue to manage your reputation by generating reviews and managing them um, regularly. So. Absolutely. Um... No, it's 100%. It's like, do you buy a product on Amazon if it has no reviews? Do you go eat at a restaurant if, if they have bad reviews? If the business hasn't replied to them, it's kind of, you lose faith in it. Um, so just recognizing that these are out here, whether we like it or not, um, but they don't, the online reviews don't have to hurt you. They can help you. Um, and it just takes, you know, being aware of, hey, these are only going to become more and more relevant thinking forward you know, pretty soon we're all going to have Google glasses, right? And every, you're going to look around at a business and the reviews are going to pop up. And like, that's where the world is going. That's not going anywhere right now. It's right here, but that's only going to continue to accelerate. And so the sooner you get a hold of it, it can give you a competitive advantage over, you know, other people who offer the same services in your area.
and other people are, you know, leveraging that. So you have to get on board with it to try to compete with them. You know, this information isn't just hiding in secret out there. It's, it's available and people kind of realize it. So uh, the longer you wait to kind of introduce it into your business, the more it kind of will hurt, hurt you in the long run. So it's important to kind of that reputation uh, we, we preach that to pretty much every small business that we work with that reputation and just building that foundation is really going to secure new customers and keep old customers as repeat customers over and over. 100%. And Justin, I think you can chime in here. I know you've been ripping online reviews recently and, um, kind of talk about the impact that's had just on like your Google profile, right? Yeah, no, it's been, we've actually have, uh, I guess you could say we've put a, a main focus on reviews and we actually have weekly key perform key performance indicators, KPIs we measure. We added Google reviews to that KPI list that we look at as a team every week. One of the tactics we have employed is to, you know, for all the B2B businesses out there, we do a lot of B2B work and we just, you know, go out and if it's a good client or it's a good supplier maybe that you're working with, and you genuinely appreciate their business, get, do them a favor and go leave them a review. Give them, you know, note that salesperson you're working with in the review. And we found by doing that, you know, it comes back to you as well. So don't be afraid to get out there and give some of your B2B clients some reviews. You know, it, it kind of comes around. But I can say that the Google reviews have increased our leads, have increased our phone call uh, rate per week. So it's definitely an indicator of how well you do business. And I think it also talks to the culture of your business. A lot of us have had trouble in the past hiring employees and labor has been a huge issue for, I know many industries, uh, specifically the construction in industry, believe it or not, your employees or, or applicants, should I say, will go and look at your reviews online before they apply at your position or at your company. So it, it's really a, a holistic view of your company and it's not only customers, but it's future applicants and candidates that are going to be researching you and you want them to see the best out there. So it goes back, I think, to asking for reviews and being proactive, leaving reviews for some of your B2B clients as well. I love that. You know, what goes around comes around. You know, we're all people, we're all businesses. We're all, we're all on the same mission, right? Of, you know, take time out of your day, go leave someone a five-star review. Hopefully they see it, you know, if they, if they have a way to get notified, um, cause that, that'll put a smile on someone's face. And I think especially right now with everything going on in the world, those little things can brighten someone's day. Um, and, and it helps their business too. So, um, I really like that tidbit. Um, and if we jump to, uh, the next slide here, the last one is, you know, data, right? Work smarter, not harder. Um, what's crazy is you, you think about some of these, you know, the most successful companies in, in the world right now, um, you know, the Amazons, the Facebook, Facebook's Ubers, they're essentially the smartest companies in the world from a data perspective. They understand that they're co constantly collecting it and using it to improve their systems. Right. Um, and it, the same thing can be said for small businesses. You can do the exact same thing. The technology is out there to allow you to, um, gather that it, it informs and improves your decision making, allows you to improve your operations. Um, forecasting is huge, is you know, how are we planning for the future? But then also, you know, even just like asking for feedback, it can influence new streams of revenue. It's like, hey, you know, I wish you guys offered this additional service. It's like, well, we can do that. Why aren't we doing that? Right. And it just comes from gathering that information and, and continuing to get smarter. Um, you know, there, there's a couple easy ways you can do this. Um, you know, obviously, you know, another quote from Deloitte, we love Deloitte here. Um, so it, it, it's essentially, you know, how can you use that to build scalable, scalable, carefully planned pilots? Um, I mean, that's, that's essentially the, the way of the world is test things out, gather the data and improve. A um, couple of key ways that, you know, small businesses can, can do this. Um, we talked about the online reviews that is essential for getting feedback. Um, social media, you can run polls, you can, you can do contests, you can gather feedback that way on what do you guys like? What do you want to see more of? How can we improve this? Um, the Google analytics, it's the same thing. Um, basically who's interacting with us? Um, you know, are, are we getting calls in this area? Why or why not? Um, and you can tweak things accordingly. Um, and it all roots back to having a centralized kind of system of record, system of truth, logging customer information in one place. You know, you can set reminders, you know, 
even things like, you know, logging people's birthday, right. And sending them a, a, a happy birthday, right. Or, you know, a special offer for that, depending on what the business is, all those little things. So, um, there's, there's a ton that can be done here. Um, I'd say, you know, a, a good place to start if, if, if it's too much, is just start by asking for feedback, right. That, that allows you to continuously improve, um, kind of the business there. So if we, if we jump to the next slide here, um, so we'll do another quick little poll here. Um, basically, you know, is there anything that's like keeping you guys up at night or challenges or things you want to learn more about? Um, I know we covered a lot today, um, but if you guys, I guess what was most interesting to you, I guess, where do you see, what do you see being most important moving forward for, for your businesses? All right, it looks like the voting is slowing down. Let's give it about 10 more seconds and then we'll close it and share the results. Okay. And here we go. We got a nice spread there. Looks like website is big. I know there's a ton of companies out there. It's kind of, you know, early 2000s, late, late 2000s, kind of got a website in now, kind of looking at what's next. Data is huge, obviously. You know, how, how, how can you be collecting that, using that most um, smarter moving forward? Payments, obviously huge. Um, yeah, capturing contact data, absolutely. Payments and, and data, that, that is huge. Well, thank you guys for chiming in there. It's always nice to hear from you on Kind of what's what's most important there um and so next steps here thank you guys all for coming L like we said um the webinar recording and the action guide will be in your inbox um, by end of day maybe tomorrow um at the latest um, like we said we have a special offer for all of you being you know members of the nsba um, we're here as a resource for you we work with small businesses all day every day even if you just want advice, you don't want to work with us, that's fine. We're, we're friendly. Um, we do have a free trial. You can start on our website um, and I'll even drop this in the chat um, as well. Um, we also have a 50% off for, uh, for the, the first six months for everyone. Um, and then we're going to be doing more webinars with, with the NSBA. So stay tuned for those. The next one should be in December. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll answer them now. Or if you want to email me directly, my contact information is right there, but really appreciate you guys all tuning in. We're really excited about the partnership with the NSBA and continuing to support small business as it is the backbone of our entire country. And we know everyone's kind of going through the ringer right now. So um, if we can be of assistance in, in any regard, um, we're happy to help. Um, Sean, Justin, really appreciate you guys jumping in and telling some of your stories. Um, if there's any questions, we'll stay on for a little bit, but just want to thank you all. So talk to you soon. Looks like most of the questions that have come in through the uh, Q&A, we've already addressed either um, through, through your conversation or um, answered uh, through the platform. Well, thanks, Eric, for having us on. And I would just, you know, my closing remark is if you are able to implement some of these things we talked about today, just get ready to scale because there's so many people that really want to do this stuff and you know, life's going to get in the way. But if, if you can put someone in charge of your digital side of your business, then you're going to be leading the charge in your industry uh, around in the corner in 2021. So get ready to grow. Yeah, Eric, and I would remark on, on what Justin just said. I think that the number one reason why we and GoSight have worked together in the short amount of time that we've worked together is that we've kind of saw the industry in terms of how important, you know, local listings are, Google My Business is, reviews, 
being able to pay online and just, you know, easy access for customers. And um, that was super important for us when working with some of our clients. Um, and as Justin just said, if you can, you know, if you are someone that is doing the day to day of your business and you're thinking, wow, marketing is something or, you know, bringing my, my business to the digital platform is very tough for me then in, then in investing in something like a CMR tool or go site or even bringing someone on to help with that would, is tremendously going to benefit your small business. You know, that's kind of how our model is built in terms of, um, successfully working with clients. So, um, yeah, this is exciting. I appreciate coming on here and being able to talk today. 100%. So, um, like we said, we really appreciate, um, all of you. It looks like someone's asking for contact info. Um, there's, you can feel free to email me directly, or if you go to our website, there's a, um, there's a free trial link, um, on there and you can kind of get in and kind of look at some, some of these tools. Um, we're here as a resource for you. So, let me know if we can help out all questions, comments, concerns. Um, we're here to support small business. So thank you guys all for, for joining in and, and we'll talk to you very soon. Yeah, guys, and if you have any questions specifically for me, you know, construction, landscaping, any of that kind of stuff, feel free to email Eric and he'll get you connected. More than happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Great. Well, thanks so much, Eric, Justin, and Sean. It was a, a ton of great information, and I did mention we'll be following up uh, with the slides, video, and a ton of other great information and resources that GoSite has available. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us, and, uh, and thanks again to you for your expertise, everyone. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.